So, in today's class, we will be discussing about Rauth Hurwitz criterion. So, in previous class, we have discussed about stable systems, unstable systems and marginally stable systems. For finding whether the system is stable or not, first we have like found characteristic equation roots, then we have plotted those roots in S-plane. After plotting those roots in S-plane, if all the roots of the characteristic equation are lying in left-handed or left half of the S-plane, then the particular system is called a stable system. If any one root of those characteristic equation is lying in right half of the S-plane, then the particular equation is called as unstable system. So, we have discussed for a quadratic characteristic equation in previous class. But if we will be getting an nth order polynomial equation of a characteristic equation, then how we have to discuss stability of those particular systems. So, for that particular situations, we have Routh Hurwitz criterion. Before getting into Routh Hurwitz criterion, first we will be seeing Hurwitz criterion. Hurwitz is a scientist who proposed this particular method for finding an nth order system's roots first we will take an nth order system, uh, equation this is an nth order polynomial equation which is a0 s power n a1 s power n minus 1 plus so on up to a n this is a characteristic equation so what we have to do is we have to find determinant of this particular pol polynomial for finding whether the system is a stable system or unstable system so here I am taking a k rows into k columns which is a square matrix for uh, a k uh, k -th order square matrix I am finding determinant so this particular determinant is called as Hurwitz criterion determinant so how we will be plotting this particular matrix is first we have to write the minors of this particular equation so only we have to represent even terms even term coefficients if we see this is second term which is even term then we have to take fourth term which is a3 coefficient just we have to take coefficient then after taking the coefficient we have to sequentially write all the coefficients so if we see here first we have started with a1 so a1 then we have to sequentially write this after a1 we will be getting a0 then we have to write all zeros then moving to the next term which is next even term coefficient a3 we have to write a3 a2 a1 a0 z then after completion of a0 we don't have any term so we will be writing 0 0 0 until so on similarly if we see this last row of this particular column here it is a 2k minus 1 it's an even term with an odd coefficient so after this, we will be writing in a sequential order a2k minus 1, a2k minus 2, and so on up to 8k minus 1, and last term as ak. Because after that, we will be not writing 0 since it is the last term of the characteristic equation. For this particular matrix, we have to find determinant, and after finding the determinant, the determinant should be greater than 0, then the system is stable system. If the determinant is less than 0 then the particular system is unstable system so if we observe stability for these systems this is characteristic equation of a single order like a single order and this is a quadratic equation um, and this is a cubic equation so we are finding stability for this is so easy and as I said for finding stability the determinant should be greater than zero if it's positive then the stability of the system is possible or else the system is unstable if we see here for this particular matrix finding determinant is easy because it's a 2 by 2 matrix we can easily find determinant the complexity of finding determinant arises in this particular matrix which is 3 by 3 matrix it is somewhat uh, like complex for finding matrix of 3 by 3 
we can find determinant easily for this 3 by 3 matrix but coming to D4 means for 4 by 4 matrix for 5 by 5 matrix and so on for k ordered matrix it's a highly impossible task for finding k uh, like k row into k column matrix so to reduce this complexity rauth is a scientist who proposed a method called rauth array we'll be seeing rauth array method so we have discussed Herbert's criteria. Now, Raoult is a scientist who has made the finding of stability of characteristic equation easily. So, Raoult uh, made it so simple to find any characteristic equation uh, stability by his Raoult array method. This is Raoult array method we will be seeing. So, first getting into Raoult array method, we will be uh, first knowing what is Routh array method. So, for finding Routh array method, first we have to take characteristic equation. We know characteristic equation will be lying in denominator of any system, which is in the form of 1 plus g of s into h of s. So, we have to take 1 plus g of s into h of s is equal to 0, which is a characteristic equation. Then we have to build Routh array for that particular character characteristic equation. Then, after finding Routh array, I will uh, be saying Routh array procedure. After finding Routh array, if in the first column of the Routh array, any sign change is occurred or any sign changes are uh, seen, then the particular system is unstable. Because, if there is any sign change occur in first column, if we see, Number of sign changes in first column is equal to number of sign changes in right hand of S plane. These indicates if we have any sign change in first column of the Routh array, then it is known as the particular sign changes are the roots of characteristic equation which are lying in right handed of S plane. So, automatically it is an unstable system. So, if we see, a stable system should contain no sign change and if there is a sign change, then the system is, if there is a sign change, then it is automatically unstable. So, this is the way we will be finding uh, a Routh array procedure. We will be seeing Routh array procedure. So, here we will be discussing a small example of Routh array. So, here I have built a Routh array for a fourth order characteristic equation. This particular thing is a Routh array. We can see it's a, uh, it is in a form of an array that is the reason it is named as Routh array. So, in this Routh array, first we have highest power of s is 4. So, we will be starting with s power 4. So, s power 4, s cube, s square, s power 1 and s power 0 which is a constant term. So, how we will be finding or how we will be building this array is for s power 4, for any highest power we have to write its coefficient. Then we have to write its alternate coefficient and alternate coefficient. So if we see here, for s power 4, we have a coefficient of a1. So we will be writing a1 here. Then after that, we will be taking a3, which is a coefficient of its alternate term, which is s square term. Then we will be taking coefficient of alternate term which is a5. So, now moving to second row of this particular Routh array. Here it is column, it is row. So, in second row, if we see, we will be writing s cube. 
so we know s cube coefficient is a2 we'll be writing a2 and similarly we'll be writing its alternate coefficient which is a4 for s so its coefficient is a4 we have written a4 and after that alternate term is zero because we don't have any alternate term since a5 is the last term of this particular characteristic equation so that alternate term is zero we'll be taking it as zero because there is no term now how to find route array for s square first we'll be writing easily this two uh, these two rows because it is easy we will be directly seeing characteristic equation and we will be writing these two rows then coming to third row how we will be finding third row is we will be cross multiplying these term with these term i will be drawing a dotted line since you can easily understand or a transparent line these term into these term a2 into a3 minus a1 into a4 these term into these term right we have to dif uh, like difference we have to find difference or we have to subtract it so a2 a3 minus a1 a4 this one into this one and divide it by this term so we will be getting a2 a3 minus a1 a4 by a2 now for finding next term of this particular row now what i am doing i will be again drawing transparent line now see I have to take these into these term. Now I have completed this particular column. Now I will be going to this column. Now a2 into a5 into I will be taking these into these term. Transparently I am writing. You can easily understand this. So a2 a5 minus a1 into 0. And we have to divide this particular term with a2 only. So in this particular row we have Find, uh, found this particular row by taking subtraction of this first column with another two columns. Right? We have found this term also. And we know after this term, we will be having zeros only. So, these into 0 is 0 minus these into 0 is 0 by a2 is 0. So, we will be getting 0. So, we will be uh, writing all zeros from here. Now, finding is power 1. So, what I am doing here is, I will be taking this whole term, I will be considering this whole term as x. So, for my convenience, I will be considering this whole term as x. And I will be considering this whole term as y. So, what I am do doing, again I am drawing lines. So, that you guys can easily understand. So, x1 into a4, if we see, x1 into a4, then Look, like x here I am taking x only. So x into a4 minus a2 into y, right? a2 into y and divide it with x term only. So we will be getting x a4 minus a2 y divided by x. Then after that we will be multiplying these term with a5 term. So we will be getting x So, once again we will just see, because it is so confusing, right? So, I will just explain one second. So, we have taken this whole term as x and we have taken this whole term as y. So, what I am doing, these term into these term, I am like again I am writing because it is somewhat confusing, that is the reason I will explain again. So, see this, transparently I am writing. I will, uh, let me repeat. So, I will be cross multiplying these with this term, x into a4. Right? Now, okay, for this particular term, I will be representing with dotted line. So, you can easily understand. So, these into these. So, x into a4 minus a2 into y. Okay? And divide it by x only. Right? Then, after that, we have to again multiply these particular term with this 0 and this particular term with this 0. So, we will be alter, uh, finally again we will be getting a 0. So, that is the reason we will be writing here 0 and we will be again writing 0 here. So, coming to next term, what we have to do is, now considering this whole particular term as z because it will be easy. Now, multiplying this particular term with this term, 
So I have already taken this term as y. So z into y minus this term with this term 0 into x. We know that however we, if we multiply any term with uh, their terms, we will be getting zeros only because all the terms here are zeros. So I will be writing 0, 0 here. So after this, uh, we have found this particular Routh array. So we will be getting a Routh array and after that we can easily find roots and we can plot them on the S plane and we can like find the stability. So we have said in third point, in last, uh, like in previous thing, we have said that if any sign change occurs, then the particular system is unstable. So here if we see, for example, finding this particular route array, if I have got a negative sign here, okay. So let, we'll take this whole part as negative sign. So it is a negative part. So if we see from here to here, it is positive. From here to here, it is positive. From here to here, we are having a sign change. So from positive to negative, we are getting. So here, the first root, which is going to be light or which is lying in right-handed or positive S plane is formed. Next, from here to here, again, we will be getting a positive sign. So it is the second root which is going to be light or which is going to lie in uh, right half of S plane which is positive S plane. So if we see here, here we have two sign changes. This is first sign change, this is second sign change. Positive to positive, positive to positive, positive to then we have getting negative. From negative to again we are getting positive. These two sign changes are nothing but these two are the roots which are going to be lying in right half or positive half of the S plane. So if we have these positive, then positive to positive, positive to positive, positive to positive, positive to positive. Everything is similar and there is no sign change, then it is stable. So stability is decided by positive uh, like sign changes. If we have any sign change, then it is unstable. If we have any sign change, it is unstable. If we have no sign change, then it is stable. But no sign change. Now, we will be seeing some limitations of this particular uh, route array. So, we have discussed that how to find a route array and we have similarly discussed the stability of a route array and we have discussed unstability of a route array. So, here a case arises. If finding this route array elements, if we get any zero element in the particular route array. For example, if we see here S4, I will be writing S3, S square. Here if we have zero term, here we have suppose A5, A3, A1. Here we have A2, A4 and zero here. And here if we have zero and we have any X term here and similarly we have zero here. So in these type of cases, what we have to do is, there are two conditions. We can either take the whole characteristic equations, like the given characteristic equation is again like taken by 1 by z instead of s in term of s power. Like we have equation a5 s power 4 a4 s cube plus so on a1 is equals to 0. So, instead of s power 4, you will be replacing it by 1 by z whole power 4. That is nothing but instead of s, you will be replacing it by z, uh, 1 by z. So, you will be getting a5 1 by z whole power 4, a4 1 by z whole cube plus so on, uh, a1 is equals to 0. Then you will be finding characteristic equation, then you will be sending that to the right hand side and you will be getting a new characteristic equation. Then after getting that new characteristic equation, again same, uh, you have to find f of z, which is nothing but characteristic equation of this particular z term. And after getting characteristic equation, you again plot or you again build a route array and you start finding the same uh, procedure and you will be getting a non-zero term. This is somewhat huge procedure and 
you can also do another procedure which is replace that particular zero replace this zero with epsilon epsilon is a smallest smallest positive term which is nothing but which can be easily ignored or which can easily uh, like uh, it is a smallest term for example 0 0.0001 if we see this it is approximately equals to 0 so we can consider this as epsilon and we can put here because it is approximately equals to 0 then if we replace this 0 with epsilon then we will be getting a term so after taking epsilon continue the route array procedure so we will be seeing a small example since it is somewhat confusing so we will be seeing an example for this particular epsilon so here we will be seeing a small example regarding that epsilon method so let's take a characteristic equation 2 s power 5 s power 4 plus 6 s cube plus 3 s square plus s plus 1 so as i have said i have to write highest power coefficient which is 2 s power 5 we have to write s power 5 here coefficient is 2 and alternate term coefficient which is 6 alternate term coefficient which is 1 next moving to next row s power 4 its coefficient is 1 next moving to next alternate term which is 3 next alternate term is 1 so we have to write written 1 here now taking a square so we uh, condition raises here if we see here here it has 0 here 0 here and it is a non-zero term here so considering this as a smallest positive value called epsilon which is equal to for example epsilon is equals to 0.0001 okay now what i am doing i am multiplying these particular term with this right 3 into epsilon minus of minus 1 and divided by epsilon so we will be getting 3 epsilon plus 1 by epsilon so here we have found first term for s square next similarly we will be finding these term So we will be getting epsilon into 1 epsilon So next for finding this one we will be multiplying these into these So epsilon into 1 minus 1 into 0 which is epsilon minus 0 by again we will be dividing it by epsilon so we will be getting epsilon epsilon cancel we will be getting 1 here so again we know all terms here are, are 0 so we will be replacing it uh, we will be writing here by 0 now we have found this s square whole part now what we have to do next we have to find for s power 1 so again I will be taking these into I will be multiplying these with this particular term so 3 epsilon plus 1 into minus 1 minus epsilon into 1 divided by these 3 epsilon plus 1 so I will be getting minus of 3 epsilon plus 1 by epsilon minus epsilon by 3 epsilon plus 1 by epsilon now again multiplying these with this these into 0 is 0 these into 0 is 0 epsilon into 0 is 0 so it will be 0 and it will be 0 now after finding this term we will be finding these term so how we will be finding it so these into these is this whole part i will be considering it as z ok z into 1 is z minus these into this is 0 so it is 0 by divided by this term which is z so again we will be getting 1 so we will be writing 1 0 0 okay. so here the question arises so whether the system is stable or unstable have to find it so for finding that particular thing we have to consider limit epsilon tends to 
zero we have to take. Since it is uh, approximately zero, we will be taking limit epsilon tends to zero. So we will be taking V's term, which is three epsilon plus one by epsilon. If we substitute zero here, so three into zero is zero plus one is one by zero. One by zero is positive infinite. So it is a positive term. So we will be writing it as positive. If it is positive, this particular term, then the system is stable. If not positive, then it is unstable. We will be seeing this particular term also. Limit epsilon tends to 0 minus of 3 epsilon plus 1 by epsilon minus epsilon divided by 3 epsilon plus 1 by epsilon. If we substitute 0 here, 3 into 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 by 0 is minus, here we have minus, so it is minus infinite, minus of, again if we substitute 0 here, minus 0, so minus infinite minus 0 by this whole part is again positive infinite, so minus by plus is always minus, so we will be getting minus infinite. So, minus infinite is nothing but this particular term is negative term. So, here the sign change is occurred. So, from positive to positive, positive to positive, then we got positive to negative term. Sorry, positive, we have got positive term only. Then from here to here, positive to negative term we have got. After getting a negative term, again we are getting a positive term here. So here we have two sign changes, which is nothing but two roots are occurring in the right half or in the positive half of the S-plane. So this particular system is unstable. So we have discussed in this particular sum, have to replace zero with epsilon and have to find sign change. So guys, you guys are clear with this particular method. So we will be seeing another case which is in this case we have one zero and uh, means one non-zero term and another terms are zeros. So if the case arises, all the terms are zeros, then what will we do? We will be seeing. So we have uh, discussed that in a case such that all the terms are zeros. If we see here, after solving here, this all terms we have got here are zeros. So in these such cases, what we have to do? So we know that this is S cube term, this is alternate S1 term, like S power 1 term. So what I am doing, we have to take this whole particular row as a auxiliary equation. So we will be getting A2 S cube plus A4 S power 1. So, after taking this auxiliary equation, we have to differentiate this auxiliary equation with respect to S. So, what we will be getting 3A2 S square plus A4, we will be getting that particular equation. So, instead of S square, like instead of 0, S square term, you replace it by 3A2 and this instead of 0, you replace it by A4 and here you again write 0, so you will be getting 3A2 A4 0. So continuously again you will be getting non-zero terms. Then again you find route array for this particular thing and you will be getting uh, roots and after getting roots you have to check whether the sign changes are occurring or sign changes are not occurring. Then after completion of this you can again plot these roots in S plane and you can check whether the equation is stable or unstable. So guys, today we have learned about Ruth Hurwitz criterion. So hope you guys understood this particular video. In next video, we will be discussing further more topics. Thank you guys.